Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We appreciate you joining us today. Well, we got another little video for you here, and um, this is going to be another uh, small entry, I guess a pocket gun entry, if you will. This is a pistol that, and, and you may have had an experience like this where you had your eye on a pistol, you looked at it a few times, you know, got excited about it, and maybe had to wait for it to come in, and you finally get it, you've got really, really high expectations, and then you get it, and you go shoot it, and then you, uh, you learn everything there is to know about it. Well, the Sig Sauer P938 is that kind of pistol for me. A lot of excitement around me getting it, a lot of anticipation. I waited, I got it, and I, uh, discovered that it has a, a lot of good features it also has some things that concern me and we're going to talk about those things in just a minute all right so jumping right into it here um, before we get started let me just say uh, we appreciate you joining us once again if this is your first time you know, watching us, or if you've watched our videos before and you haven't already done so, would you please take a moment to subscribe? If you look down here in the um, lower right-hand part of your computer screen, if you're on a computer, there's a little button you can hit to subscribe. If you're on a mobile device, just scroll down below the video and you can hit subscribe there and hit the bell to find out when we make new videos. It really helps us out a lot, and we appreciate it. So what do we have today? Well, the Six Hour P938. Um, Another little pocket gun. I like small guns like this um, because I prefer, um, and you'll hear me say this if you watch my other videos, whenever possible, I like to carry a small gun like this. And um, it's just because my philosophy is different than some that I believe that if the gun is small and it's comfortable, you'll carry it. And, you know, if it's cumbersome in any way or if you can't get comfortable with it, you may carry it sometimes and sometimes you won't. And, you know, and a carry gun in a safe isn't going to do you any good. And I just want to make sure I've always got something on me that I can count on. So these small guns have always interested me. So let's just take a look here. We always like to do a little comparison here right off the bat. So let me take this little pistol here and let's compare it with something that I feel is a, um, of about equal size. So we got the little Kimber Micro 9 here. Now these pistols are... You know, in my mind, they're pretty close. They're not exact, obviously, but they're they're pretty close to the same size. If this SIG had an extended magazine on it, you know, they probably would be, you know, almost the same size. If you look at them, you compare. If you look at the, you know, the length of the slide, if you look at the thickness of the guns, if you look at the height from the rear, if you line them up and you look at it, with the exception of that extended magazine right there, they are very, very close to the same. And I think that that's a good comparison. Um, let's look at some other guns that are popular in the same market. Now, this will be an interesting one for you. Look at that. It's interesting when something makes the Glock 43 look big, but it does. The 938 is a pretty small pistol. When you put it next to something like the 43, which is already a very nice, small, you know, uh, compact carry gun, um, I was pretty impressed with just the scale that this shows you of how small that really is. Now, let's talk about some of the basic features here. Um, this is a six round magazine, so this is a six plus one nine millimeter pistol. This is where my first gripe actually comes in. And you know, you've got this nice six round um, polished magazine, very nice, but you just get one, this is it. It's nice, but you get one. And the other problem I have is that if you're gonna have a gun like this, you've gotta do one of two things, in my opinion, for it to really be a good out-of-the-box solution. Either A, they need to give you that extended magazine like they do on the Kimber, like they do on the Glock, 
you know, and I can go on and on with people that do this. Now, don't get me wrong, they're available. You can easily get these magazines, but out of the box, you don't have it. Which means that, for me, like I said, either one, it needs to have an extended mag, or number two, I need to have something to grip. Now, you've got some pretty aggressive texturing in the metal here and on the back, so it's not like that there's nothing for you to hang on to, but in the absence of having a three-finger grip, I'd like some grooves in my two-finger grip. And there's a lot of small pistols that already do that. You know, a good example, I've got HKs, like my little P30SK. It's got your finger grooves. And so even though it's just two fingers, feels very solid. You know, I don't have any issues with this as a two-finger grip. Feels very good. You know, and even some other pistols I've had, you know, forever, like little baby Glock. You know, little baby Glock's got little finger grooves in it. So I don't have a problem carrying this, drawing this with just two fingers, because I got some place for those fingers to go, and I feel like it's a solid grip. So that's my first real complaint. So moving on to the other features here. This one has the Sig, Sig Light uh, glow sights on it, which do show up very well at night. And the white dot um, during the daytime shows up pretty good. Not as good as fiber, obviously, but it's pretty good. Um, this pistol is a 1911 style. It's not a true 1911, obviously, but it's a 1911 style, so it's single action only. So if you're a fan of 1911s and you want to carry it with the safety on there, cocked and locked, you can do that. It is an ambidextrous safety, so you left these out there. This one's made for you, too. Um, this particular pistol also has the, uh, the really nice wood grips. I got that on mine. I think the combination of that and the Sig Light sights is what pushed mine to the higher end of the price category, but I just thought it looked nicer. And um, if I can get them, I like to have night sights on a pistol, even though I'm kind of favoring fiber optic um, the further along I go in this game. And then of course your trigger, it's very smooth, very crisp. We'll talk about that in a second when we talk about the range. And then you've got your magazine release here, and it's you can see it's raised a bit. It's very easy to get to, so there's no issue getting to your mag release. So, like I say, it's really good as far as size. Um, good sights, got a nice trigger, 1911 style uh, weapon. But um, I do have considerations about this grip. Um, to me, out of the box, I really would have rather have had an extended magazine or someplace to put my fingers. So that's gonna be your basic overview as far as size and features on the P938. All right, so let's talk about something that's always important. Um, obviously, if you're a person that carries, you're gonna shoot your guns, and if you shoot your guns, you need to clean your guns. So let's talk about the uh, disassembly, um, reassembly procedure for this thing. As always, with, um, with any gun, and drop your magazine and of course you want to make sure it's clear you know verify there's nothing in there which hopefully you would have done that anyway but you know we're just going to cover our bases so for this particular pistol um it's really not that hard to disassemble what you're going to do is you're going to grab your slide you're going to move it backwards you notice there's a little notch here in the slide there's also a notch at the back of the lever here which is also your pin and once you get that notch aligned, you can push it out. You can start it from one side there and kind of push on it. And then you can grab it. Let's see, there you go. And it can either, it'll either fall out the other side, or you can just pull it with your fingers. I managed to get it to just drop out there. Okay, and then once it's out, you can just push the slide right off the front there. Okay. So with that done, you've got your, your guide rod and your spring. And to get this out, this takes a little more force than you might think. Um, I've taken a lot of guide rods and springs out. And for a little gun, this thing has got some, uh, it's got some force. So take a couple of fingers here and compress this. And then you can lift the whole thing out just like that. And then, of course, you can take your barrel out. Well, there's your basic disassembly. Um, and of course, before it goes back together, it's a good idea to get a little bit of oil, you know, on the rail here. Because you've got all this movement, you can see the grooves inside the slide. 
that's where obviously the majority of your movement is going to be. So you want to make sure to get a little bit of oil on there. And I usually put a little bit right here um, in the hammer in this area where the this moves back and forth. Not too much oil. I don't like oil just running out of my weapon. But I like enough to just protect those parts. So to put this back together. Okay. So you've got your barrel. Obviously the flat side goes down. So you drop that back into place. Just like that. Now this uh, guide rod... If you look, it's got a little U-shaped notch, and then you've got the round part. So this part here goes up, and this goes, the part my thumb is here, the U-notch goes down on the barrel. So let's turn it down that way. And it's good to use a two-finger approach like we did before. And your this front of the barrel right here, you've got a, uh, front of the slide rather, you've got a little insert. And... You line the spring up in there, and then you kind of start pushing this guide rod, trying to compress the spring. So you can use one finger to help with that. And then once you get it close, you can transition over here and use two fingers and compress this and get this down in there where it belongs. Okay, now this does take a little more force, as you can tell by the uh, nice spring tracks on my, on my finger there. So it takes a little bit of doing to get it in there. And then you're going to simply take the slide and you're going to go back onto the frame here. Now watch this here. Make sure you push this down so when the slide comes back, it's on top of that. That should be down. You can see it in there sliding past it because it's safely forward. If you try and force that backwards, um, you can bend or break that piece. So you don't want to do that. So once you get to this point, you're going to bring the slide back. And remember that notch we started off with? Get that notch back aligned there again. And then here's your pin. You can take this and just like you did before, put the pin back in here and line this notch up with the notch in the slide. And when you get it lined up, it'll drop right in. And just like that, you've reassembled the pistol. Once again, make sure you use caution when you're putting the slide back on so you don't break or bend that little piece. Other than that, it goes together pretty easy. And of course, that, um, that spring tension was quite a bit higher than I would have expected. So be careful when you're taking it out and be careful when you're putting it back in. If you don't have real strong fingers, that might be tricky. But that's your basic overview for disassembly and reassembly. All right, so let's talk about the range. This particular pistol, I was pretty excited to get out and shoot it. Once again, I wish I'd had me a extended grip or something um, to use it, but I used it just the way it was. And uh, so I go out and um, I got ready to shoot this pistol. And luckily for me, um, there was actually some other people I shoot with there. And there's another gentleman um, who's part of a, a, a group of regulars. And he had his uh, P938 as well. So between the two of us, we had two magazines. So we jokingly said, well, between the two of us, you know, we have enough mags to shoot if we do it one at a time. So that's what we did. We just used uh, the two mags that we had. And I'll tell you a few things about shooting this pistol. Um, even though the grip was less than ideal, um, the gun was not near as snappy as I thought it was going to be. It managed the recoil really well. And this little pistol was shooting very respectable one-inch groups at 21 feet, which is the range that I normally will practice for self-defense. Um, I'll shoot further than that just for, you know, just for fun. But I always shoot at 21 feet as my, you know, repetitive practice distance. Um, and that's just how I train. This gun shot really, really well. However, um, about halfway through the second magazine, um, had a failure to feed. I thought, well, that's no big deal. It's a new gun. Um, these things happen. Now, I cleaned the gun very thoroughly before it ever went to the range because I always do that. And uh, this is just standard, you know, practice ammo that I was using. So I used some different practice ammo. Got through about another magazine and a half, and then I had another failure to feed. Um, so basically about once a magazine or once every other magazine, the gun was stopping up. And 
not feeding correctly. So, um, I decided to change over to some different ammo. Um, I tried different hollow points, you know, went through several different kinds of defensive rounds, uh, Sig V crown, even some of the little horn of the ammo that I kind of like in some of these smaller guns. I tried several things and no matter what I did, uh, it seems like at least once every other magazine, um, I'd have a failure to feed. And so I decided that that was going to be a, an, an issue for me. So what I actually did is I actually sent the gun in um, to SIG and had them look at it. Um, the gun was returned to me, um, you know, stating that there was no issues with the pistol. So, you know, I said, all right, well, that's a little disheartening. So I cleaned it up again and, um, you know, we took it back to the range and several of us shot the pistol and no matter who shot the pistol or what kind of ammo we put through it, uh, same result, uh, about every other magazine I'd have, um, a round that would, um, uh, you know, fail, failure to feed and, um, you know, the stoppage is, you know, about once every other mag. And so for me, I'm thinking that, uh, you know, that's, that's a bit of an issue. The gun shoots really well, very accurate. The trigger is really crisp and follow-up shots are really good. The sights are good. So shooting the gun is great, but I get a lot of failures. And, and my issue is that I don't own a lot of pistols that fail. You know, it's so rare for me to have a pistol, you know, fail to shoot that I'm not even sure how to act whenever it happens. Um, and I've been in contact with SIG since that time, um, trying to find out if I can uh, send it back in again. And, um, you know, so far, um, it looks like that's what I'm going to do and see what they say. But they said there was nothing wrong with it before, and we still had the same problem. So for that reason, um, this is a really cool pistol that I won't carry. You know, it shoots well, it's accurate, but I have to trust a pistol. And any pistol that I have that has uh, problems at the range, no matter what the reason is, I'm usually out pretty early on. So unfortunately, that's kind of a reality for me with this one. And hopefully if you have one, um, you know, if you own one of these and you've had better results... Uh, tell me about your experience in the comments. If you had issues and you had to send yours to SIG, tell me about that too. I'm just curious whether anybody else has had some of the same problems you know, that I had with this one. But anyway, that's our overview for the range. Good shooting pistol, but not reliable enough for me. All right, well, you know that's not going to be a video unless we talk about um, carry. Every gun has got to have some kind of a score for how it carries and this one's no exception so this is an area where i'm going to give this pistol extremely high marks um if you've watched the channel at all you know that um i'm pretty fond of the sticky holsters it's not the only solution but these are nice convenient because you can you can pocket carry them you can put it in the waistband as long as you're not you know I don't think they're good for really heavy guns, but as long as you don't plan on moving around a lot, you know, running with it or whatever, it's not a bad solution. Now, another solution that I've used on this one is the DeSantis gun hide, which is this holster here. I really like this, um, the way this is set up. It has this little piece here and it will sit in your pocket pretty flat so you can have the gun straight up you know and if you need to draw the gun you can just come straight up out of the holster you know from your pocket and um, it's a nice little setup and I've carried it many times this way um, and dress pants it's extremely comfortable and that's what I'm wearing most of the time so it's a good solution now when I'm not wearing dress clothes another really good solution and uh, you know just for clarification here um, I don't get paid a dime from these guys to talk about their products, but this is a crossbreed uh, Super Tuck, and I love, I absolutely love these holsters. I've got a lot of these, which is why all mine are labeled, because that's the only way I can keep up with, you know, which one I'm grabbing for which gun. But um, you've got this, you know, Kydex part for the pistol, and then you've got this, you know, horse hide, 
Now they make a couple different configurations of how you can get this. I usually pay a little bit more and get this style because it's better and it's better for me. I'm a little hot natured. And so this is more comfortable for me during the summer. But if you look, okay, you've got some retention here. It's not falling out. So it takes a little bit of effort to remove this. Now, in addition to this, I've also tried the uh, Alien Gear uh, holster, and it's pretty good too. But carrying this, typically I'm going to carry this in about the 3 o'clock, 3.30 position, um, and if I'm not carrying it in the pocket. And all those configurations were outstanding. This gun is so light, um, it is so narrow, that honestly, it's one of the few pistols that I've carried that I completely forgot that I had it. So if you are considering a compact 9mm, you don't mind paying a little bit more for it, um, you'll get the accuracy, and it's very compact and extremely comfortable. So it gets extremely high marks for comfort. All right, so let's talk about the overall picture here. Sig Sauer P938. You know, Sig makes some really nice pistols. I've got, I've got a lot of them, and um, I've had a chance to shoot a lot of Sig pistols, and I think they're really well made. And um, it's just little things, you know. To, to me, the 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 finish, the appearance of the pistol is really nice. Um, it seems to go together well. There's attention to detail in certain areas. There are some things, like I said, that I, I think could be better. To me, you really either need finger grooves or it needs to come with an extended mag. Because to me, if you're going to pay as much money as this pistol cost, it should come out of the box ready to be a concealed carry pistol. And to me, without one of those two things, it's not. And that's just me. Um, it's a very accurate shooting pistol. You know, it's a very, very good trigger. Trigger breaks nice and clean. It just snaps. It's really, really nice. Um, the Sig Light sights show up really well. You get a good sight picture with the pistol. And surprisingly, it manages the recoil, you know, very well. If you're a 1911 fan, once again, you can carry this thing cocked and locked, just like a 1911, and the extra is safety, so it is, you know, friendly for our lefties as well. So it's a good pistol in a lot of respects. Um, like I said, unfortunately for me, um, there are some reliability issues with mine and um, reliability issues at this point have no explanation. So what I really can say about the 938 at this point is it's the coolest gun that I'll never carry. And that's about it. Well, we appreciate you joining us today. You know, once again, if you have some additional comments um, on maybe how yours is done, or if you have different questions about the gun, maybe about this one, or if you want to let us uh, know about something you'd like to see, um, we try and base um, the stuff that we show you on our videos as much as possible on directly what you request. And we'll try to get any weapon that you want us to review or any subject. As long as it's about concealed carry, something relevant, we'll try and get it done for you. Once again, we really appreciate your support. If you haven't subscribed, please do so now. It really helps us out. Um, you know, we appreciate you watching. Um, we're going to be back really soon with another video. And until then, be careful, and we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot.